beneath the shadow of my wings. You are not prepared! No, I'm just kidding. What's up guys and welcome to another mastery series guide. Uh, this week we're doing Unchained. And you might be thinking, but Michael, why should I be playing Unchained when Battle Wizard is fucking broken? Well, let me fucking tell you. Two reasons. Firstly, I mean, just fucking look at her. You look fucking badass. I mean, how fucking badass does Unchained look? I mean, probably the best looking character in the entire fucking game. And you know what else? Because you're not a fucking casual. And even if you are, don't worry about it. I got you, man. Because by the time I'm done with this video, you won't be. I mean, either that or possibly rage quit every single game you encounter her from now on to the end of time. But I'm at least, like, 52% confident. So, uh, yeah. Third reason. Oh, wait, there, there was no third reason. But I'm unchained, so I don't give a fuck. And I'm gonna tell you that her ultimate is like a reverse suicide bombing. I mean, th think about it. You're about to die, so you explode to stay alive. A few moments later. But uh, anyways, let's get serious. I promise. Starting now. Now just a couple of uh, useful things the game doesn't tell you to improve your life expectancy. Overcharge has a metric of 40. What does that mean? That just means overcharge is a number and that number is 40. So you have 40 overcharge. Your ultimate ability grants plus 12% melee power stacking uh, additively and per 6 overcharge burned, you will gain 1 out of the 5 stacks. That means by the time you hit the 3rd and final bar on the overcharge bar, you will have reached all of your stacks. Your career ability replenishes all of your uh, overcharge instantaneously, it works after you have overheated as well, and it has a cooldown of exactly 2 minutes or 120 seconds. This ties Unchained for the longest career ability cooldown in the game along with Ranger Veteran and Iron Breaker. Now, as you might have noticed, but also might not have noticed, uh, dealing damage as well as taking damage both replenishes your uh, career ability. Now, this varies from hero to hero, ability to ability, but in this case, for each minion you hit, you will replenish an extra uh, quarter of a second. So if you do one attack, you hit five minions, 1.25 seconds. Now, on top of that, taking damage reduces your ability cooldown by half a second per damage. So that's not depending on how many times you get hit, it is directly correlated to the damage you take. With one noticeable exception, which is venting your overcharge using R. Half of all damage taken is turned into overcharge. Again, with the one noticeable exception of venting with your R. Now what that means is, let's say a storm burn hits your face for 60 damage, that's gonna generate 30 overcharge, filling up three quarters of your overcharge bar. However, any trait or talent reducing overcharge generated, such as a uh, thermal equalizer on your staff, is also going to be applied to the overcharge you generate when taking damage, on top of any damage reduction multiplier, which essentially means you can reduce the amount of overcharge you generate when taking damage by up to 30%. And keep in mind, this is before you start adding damage reduction multipliers into the equation. Which brings me to items and properties. So, assuming you're playing neither Weaves or Cataclysm difficulty, for any of the four other difficulties for Group to Legend, you generally want to run Crit Chance and Curse Resistance. As you want to farm books, you want to pick up those Grimoires every single game in order to progress your loot, basically. Now, the reasoning behind running Crit Chance on your Trinket is primarily that you want to proc your Swiss Lane on your melee weapon as much as possible in order to maximize the amount of value you, you can get from having your passive. And when you combine that with the 15% attack speed talent, you're gonna attack ridiculously fast whilst having the highest possible melee power of any hero in the game. I mean, you're basically gonna be an armored elite killing machine on fire. Now there are builds that don't run Swift Slaying, but 90% of the time you're gonna use Swift Slaying. So you want to have that crit chance, again, in order to increase your attack speed as you gain most of your value from pure melee combat. You want to run Explosive Ordnance, as I talked about in the Shade Guide, it is the superior trait uh, compared with, uh, with Shrapnel. You really only want to have one person on your team, at most, running Shrapnel. 
and even so explosive ordnance is just so much more versatile and generally the better trade. Now, if you're playing Cataclysm and you're not running Curse Resistance, you have a couple of options. One of them is cooldown reduction, as Unchained along with the uh, Iron Breaker and the Ranger Veteran have the longest ulti cooldown in the game of uh, 120 seconds, which means 10% is a full 12 seconds. Now the thing about Unchained is, in order to play aggressively, you need to have your ulti off cooldown as a failsafe. Like, you don't use the ulti as an offensive tool in of itself, but having it off cooldown is what's going to allow you to properly play aggressively and prevent dying, losing a Grimoire, or basically wiping the entire team potentially on Cataclysm. So, b basically what I'm saying is only when your ulti is off cooldown should you allow yourself to get super high overcharge, increasing your attack speed and your melee power, and thus wreck everything that even pretends to have a helmet on. Now, if you find yourself dying a lot, however, I would strongly con uh, consider running Stamina Recovery. If you watch my Shade Guy, you already know why Stamina Recovery is fucking amazing. Basically, it reduces the time between your block being broken and generating that first crucial stamina, which can then block an entire heavy attack. But basically, 9 out of 10 times if I'm playing Cataclysm, I'm going to be running either Crit Chains and Cooldown Reduction, or Crit Chains and Stamina Recovery. Certain meta builds do run movement speed, but it's not the most desirable of the four trades for Quick Play specifically. Now just to sum up the trinket, if you're not playing Cataclysm, get Crit Chains and Curse Resistance, potentially Cooldown Reduction or Stamina Recovery in combination with uh, Curse Resistance. But if you at all can, definitely make sure you combine either of those three traits with the Curse Resistance, and if you're running Cataclysm, combine either of those three traits in whichever way you see fit. If I had to pick one, my own personal preference would be running Crit Change with Stamina Recovery, as I feel like it's the most versatile of the three, uh, at least once you learn to manage your overcharge efficiently. Now, the charm, however, is a different story. It's pretty much a non-variable. Uh, regardless of your weapon and staff build, you're going to be running uh, power versus chaos as well as attack speed. Attack speed we already covered is by far the best trade for Unchained as you want to be melee aggressive. Um, on top of that power versus chaos is just generally better than power versus Skaven but in this case it also allows you to hit uh, certain breakpoints on a variety of your weapons which pretty much means the only variety you're going to have on your charm. Uh, is whether you're gonna run decanter or proxy. I suggest proxy if you're uh, playing Cataclysm, as proxy is the stronger of the two traits, although it's undeniably also the less fun of the two traits. Decanter relies less on your, uh, your team and more on yourself. Obviously, if you wanna do big plays, decanter is uh, preferable. You don't wanna run concoction, as concoction is simply the time you have with the buff is simply too short uh, to get any meaningful value compared to both decanter and proxy. You always want to have attack speed. Simply, you're a you're a melee beast. Uh, your primary damage comes from uh, your passive, where you gain uh, melee damage, uh, melee power based on your overcharge. So you're going to be in melee combat a lot, and you need attack speed. Attack speed is as we talked about before, it's extra damage, it's attack time, it it's just amazing. You need you need attack speed, and in the current meta, power versus chaos is simply superior in in a more general sense to power versus Gaven, as it affects the most minions and the sh as well as the strongest minions. And although breakpoints are significantly harder to calculate, at, at the very least much messier to calculate, and even harder and messier to go by as you have this mixture of your passive, barrage stacks, uh, fire dots applied, which just means you have this soup of stacking damage, which makes it very hard to, to go by a specific breakpoint. So instead of crunch some numbers based on data collected from, uh, I think, the past week playing Unchained with either of the two traits, uh, and according to my math, there is no doubt that there's a st statistically significant damage output when using power versus chaos, as well as a slightly higher average on kills per connected hit, which again suggests the breakpoints are better with power versus chaos. Moving on to the next piece of jewelry, 
basically on uh, the necklace always want to run health. Why is that? Well, Unchained has 150 base HP, which already there, that's extra value, as you get 20% of the 150 rather than 20% of the 100, for example, for a total of 180 HP. But potentially, due to Unchained's passive, which takes half of all damage taking and turns it into your overcharge, which stacks with your maximum health, as that extra 30 HP is now potentially 60 extra HP, rather than 40 for example. Now, although you shouldn't count on it in practice, this theoretically means that you have a potential HP bar of 300. Now, I would say the second trait is a bit more open to individual preference. Mostly, I would run stamina, since stamina, as I told you before, is both block cost and it's a push at the same time. But again, depending on your talent build, you might run block cost reduction, or even, dare I say, damage reduction versus X. Play around with it, see what, uh, what you like. Now, for the orange trait, I would always be running one of two things. Bar skin, if you feel like you overcharge often and often hit that critical point, then run bar skin. Otherwise, run boon of Shalia, which is the trait that would ge help you generate the most temporary HP, which again then would allow you to vent more. Uh, thus also fixing the problem, but in a, in a different way. Now, let's move on to some talents. Now, since you are a melee hitting machine, you are very rarely going to be running Burn Bloom, unless you're doing something highly specific. Reckless Rampage is an option, definitely viable. However, I do find most of the time with most weapons, Soul Quench out for, uh, outperforms Reckless Rampage. Reckless Rampage is viable and is definitely an option if you prefer it, but uh, I would run Soul Quench for most of the weapons. Now as for the second talent, you're very very rarely going to be riding Syrian Grasp. Now it's, I haven't tested it properly, but I have a really hard time finding a scenario in which Syrian Grasp should be worth it on Unchained. I, I could be wrong. Feel free to leave a comment if you, if you disagree. However, in my opinion, at least 9 out of 10 times, you're going to be running Frenzied Flame. Why is that? Well, Frenzy Flame is just amazing. Now, you might reasonably assume 15% oh, attack speed while above high overcharge. And you might reasonably assume that high overcharge means you have to hit the last final bar. But in fact, it procs at 50%, which is like super easy to get to. And totally doable while still feeling fairly safe that one trash minion isn't going to hit you in the back and thus overcharging you to the point where you overheat. So it's basically near guaranteed value all the time. Now, Until I made this guide, I had actually only ever once put on Chain Reaction, where it just didn't work because I didn't last hit stuff. I tried to do Solar Run and however I did find that with the Fire Sword, it actually has really good solo potential for clearing out hordes where you otherwise struggle. It can make it so much easier to clear out horse with uh, with melee. However, it is still a meta build. It's still a meta talent, it, since it's entirely depending upon you last hitting a given minion while it's on fire, and you have absolutely nothing, no talent, no options for increasing the burn time or damage on Unchained. So basically, assume that you're going to be running Frenzied Flame almost all the time. Next up, we have the Stacker talent. Now, Mainstay is what you're going to be running pretty much every single time. Now, Enhanced Power doesn't hit any significant breakpoints on Unchained. You don't want to be running that. Like, if you're going to be running Enhanced Power, you might as well just go play the Pyromancer, right? And in my experience, Mainstay outperforms Boulevard pretty much every single time. So unless you're meta building again, you're going to be running Mainstay pretty much every time. Now, as for the level 20 talent, you, first you have Numb to Pain. Uh, numb to Pain. In my experience, again, unless you're meta building, in which case you're going to focus your whole build around it, you're mostly not going to be running it. Instead, for 9 out of 10 games, you're going to be running Conduit. Now, why is that? Well, Conduit is guaranteed value. Not only does it increase the rate at which you uh, vent your overcharge, but also reduces the amount of damage you take as you vent your overcharge, meaning you're going to have an easier time regulating your overcharge up to a high point where you have the attack speed, you have the power, as well as making better use of your uh, temporary HP. Now, as of Dissipate, it's kind of in the same category as Numb to Pain. I do run it sometimes, but again, it's super meta builds that require you to focus most of your items as well around it. So uh, unless you're in an adventurous mood, <laughs> 
or just want to want to do some testing yourself, I suggest running Conduit. Next up, we have the level 25 talent. Now, the no-brainer is natural talent. Why is that? Well, reduce overcharge generated by 10%. That goes both through your staff attacks, as well as reducing the amount of overcharge you generate when taking a specific amount of damage. Now, over here we have Enfeebling Flames. Now, Enfeebling Flames is a fantastic talent, but it does require you, in most scenarios, to run Fire Sword simply because Fire Sword is the only melee weapon that has a proper first attack AoE uh, fire dot and fire, right? So you, sure, you can burn things with your staff, but honestly, how often you're going to do that and then be in melee combat to take damage? The regular sword simply doesn't have any burn modifier, and the Flaming Flail's first heavy attack only has two stagger, which means you're never going to hit multiple enemies, not unlike the crow bill that also only has a burn modifier on light attack 4, which is not optimal, and the dagger, obviously, which, again, if you're running dagger, why are you going to be running unchained, right? That is, if you're not metabuilding, of course. Last but not least, we have the maze, which, as you can see, again, only two stagger for the burn attack. Now, that leads the fire sword as the only viable option to actually synergize with enfeebling flames. Now, as for the last talent, burning dragged, it basically removes all your overcharge in an instant which, whenever you get below 50% health. Now it does this whether it's a good time or not, whether you want it to or not. So even though it might potentially, in total, reduce more damage taken slash overcharge generated over an entire match, the coordination of when you want to be at high overcharge and when you don't want to be at high overcharge is just not there. Like it, It's basically whenever you get hit by accident, which again is mostly an accident. So, coordinating that in a useful manner is not, like, it's not viable in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, generally, natural talent is what you're going to be doing. Now, as for the last talent, you're mostly going to be running a uh, bomb bomb, simply because the temporary HP is great, not just for you, but also for your allies. Flame wave is just terrible, like flat out terrible. You, your ulti deals very little damage, and you're not using your ulti in order to deal damage, so you just... It, you're not going to be running Flame Weave. It, it's absolutely horrible, in my opinion, as your ulti is a defensive tool. Again, it's something you use to save your own ass whenever you have to. Now, the temporary HP allows you not only to ulti and support your entire team, but also to do burst damage right after, as you know you're going to have temporary HP to vent. Now, as much as I want to love Fuel for the Fire, for general quick play games, it's just not as good as Bomb Bomb. Like, if you've watched my... Uh, Essential Mechanics Guides, you know that this is a buff that stacks multiplicatively, meaning it also takes all of your other power mechanics into account, which means you can generate an absolutely insane amount of power with this talent. However, whenever you ulti, that's not the scenario in which you can stack it up, right? Because you ulti, remove all your power, and then you have the buff. Like, again, in the Essential Mechanics Guide, it was mostly to explain the mechanic. So you're not actually going to have that power stack up in this case very often. Now, it's very important that you don't underestimate the potential offensiveness of a defensive talent. Because if you have defensive talents, you can feel comfortable being offensive, if that makes sense. Uh, and Unchained is one of those heroes, where again, there, there's a fine balance between looking like you're amazing and looking like you're horrible from the, the perspective of your team. If you overcharge all the time, you're going to be scared to do stuff, and you're just not going to be able to get the value that you want to get out of Unchained. So, at least on high difficulties, Legend and above, I strongly suggest at the very least starting with, uh, with the temp HP talent and moving on from there. Now, let's talk about Unchained's weapons, how they attack, and very importantly, how you pair them up with one another. Now, if you this was a Pyromancer Guide, I might start out asking you to pick your favorite ranged weapon and then build around that. But as this is Unchained, Master of Melee Combat, we're going to do the opposite. I suggest we're going to start with uh, with the melee weapons. So, so uh, first off, for the purpose of this video, I am going to exclude the dagger, as it's a meta building item for Unchained in a broader sense. And so instead we're going to start with uh, the mace. It has amazing stagger. Okay, it's really important that you notice when playing Unchained specifically. The stagger and the cleave numbers, which you can see here in the middle. On the left we have the damage, on the right we have the stagger. And as you can see here, heavy attack 2, heavy attack 3, but 
very noticeable light attack 2, 3, and 4. I have both a large amount of stagger as well as a cleave modifier now. To deal armor damage with the maze, it, the first attack that you have is an overhead, which is really important to notice because it's a free and easy headshot. However, of the light attacks, it is only the first attack that has actual armor damage, which means if you want to light attack your way to glory, you need to do an animation cancel in order to attack faster. Heavy attacks though? Now one thing you can do, if you really want to try hard with the maze, is you can actually do an animation cancel. Since the mace has good special pro uh, special properties, it has decent armor damage, and on top of that, it has a lot of stacker. Besides the first light attack and the first heavy attack, so you do need to get into the combo. Uh, but it's actually a fairly versatile weapon. Also, it has a surprising amount of uh, of mobility: 20% dodge distance and three effective dodge count, which you might not expect from a weapon of that size. Okay, up next, we have the Crowbill. Now, the Crowbill used to be my favorite for quite a while, at least prior to Winds of Magic. Now, the thing about the Crowbill, which I feel like has made the weapon lacking a bit, uh, at least on Cataclysm difficulty, not on Legend, is you need to notice here, if you look at the cleave limit, damage slash dagger, now, undeniable, it's undeniable that the Crowbill has by far the highest armor damage output of any of uh, of any of Sienna's weapons. Like that's that's for sure, undoubtedly. If you're trying to kill a Chaos Warrior, this is the weapon you're going to kill it the fastest with, no question about it. However, due to the cleave limit and stagger and the talents for temporary HP on Unchained, you very easily get overwhelmed on Cataclysm. But, like, it's not a problem to keep the Horde away in the perfect scenario, but when shit hits the fan, if you're low or hit gray HP and have no healing, building up your temp HP is a very, very slow process. So at the very least, it's something to keep in mind whenever uh, using the Crowbill. Now the temp HP talent from your ulti does help, but still, that's a two minute cooldown. And you can't be dependent on that every single time. So basically what I'm saying is, I, I do suggest a little bit of caution if you're not used to this weapon, at least on Kata. Now don't get me wrong, it's an amazing weapon and it's definitely viable. And very few weapons can clear a patrol of either kind as quickly as the Crowbill. However, however, you do might find yourself struggling in versatile situations against multiple different enemies uh, simply because your attack is just not capable of hitting more than one minion at a time if, if you're lucky too, if you have high enough power and that's versus trash minions which just means you're, you're not generating a lot of temp HP at least it's something you, you should keep in mind uh, also notice there's no uh, special modifiers besides the burn attack on light 4 which is yet another factor which contributes to the weapon having extremely poor cleave which also means your ultimate will regenerate slower. Up next we have the Sword of the Flame, yes yes. Now the fire sword is kinda special. Now why is that? Well it has a unique playstyle and of all the weapons you can do a bunch of builds with this weapon that simply don't make sense with any of the other weapons. Now, th now the reason for that is this first heavy charged attack, which basically does a huge AoE, good cleave, and applies a really effective burn dot damage modifier. Uh, it's important to notice that the first heavy charged attack has a higher DPS dot than the second heavy charged attack. So if you can, you primarily want to use the first attack, and then cancel, and then back into the first attack if you're trying to apply the dot. However, the second attack does have more stagger and a higher amount of armor damage. So you want to make sure you understand that so you can vary your attack sequence according to which minions you're fighting. Now running the 30% damage reduction on your level 20, uh, 25 talent is really, really effective with the fire sword. Due to the amount of burns you have, they're all going to deal 30% less damage. 
which then again stacks with all of your other damage reduction multipliers. But the really key thing to remember is something I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is that amount of hits damage done to minions reduce the cooldown of your career ability, which also goes for dot damage in this case, which means you want to spam that fucking fire sword as much as possible. Last up we have the sword, which is pretty straightforward, as you might imagine. It has 20% dodge distance and 3 effective dodge counts, uh, just like the maze. Whereas the crowbar, I believe, has a crowbar has uh, 25, so a bit extra dodge. Now just for comparison, every single weapon besides the dagger, I believe, has an effective block angle of 90 degrees, whereas the dagger only has 40. But uh, anyways, the sword. Now, as you can see here, the sword has a bunch of special modifiers, which means it cleaves a fuck ton of minions. Like, you can see here the damage slash dagger cleave limit. Really good numbers for light attacks, especially when you apply the line span modifier. Now the heavy attack, even better, 22.63. Now what you want to keep in mind is stagger increases with power, which means when you have attacks with high cleave and stagger modifier multiplied with your power, you're going to have a very easy time staggering minions, which then in effect due to our stagger talent further increasing our power versus that minion, doing more damage and proccing soul quench for extra temp HP, or due to the extra power and cleave modifiers of the sword, Reckless Rampage also scales incredibly well. Now this is where the crow build is severely lacking, um, and that's where you're gonna shine through with the, with the one-handed sword. Now armor-wise, it does have armor damage, it's not fantastic, but it's there. And you know, once you build up your power modifiers, it deals decent armor damage. And also you shouldn't undervalue versatility when doing quick play. Now obviously, having a highly specific position in your team and role in your team is more effective if you have, like, but that requires a pre-made team setup. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, just a quick showcase here of, uh, like we, if you're fighting a patrol with multiple shielded enemies, really you want to build up your barrage stacks you want to get as much power as possible. As I said, power uh, stacks in terms of stagger and cleave, which means one of the things you can do with Unchain is you can actually stagger almost an entire patrol just by yourself. As you can see here, even though they're all shielded, I can al almost always stagger like four or five of them in a single attack with the heavy on the flail. Also keep in mind that the third and fourth light attack hits through shields. That's also really important. But yeah, very few other like I'd, very few other scenarios you can have a hero just, you know, fight ten freaking shielded minions at the same time and basically have no problem. Now if you're not on the flow, you want to do something to break their block first. Uh, get their guard down. You can do this with the uh, attacks. However, if there are multiple shield enemies, you're going to have a tough time. The fourth attack in the light sequence does hit through the block, but if you're fighting a patrol, like, that's too long. Like, like that's one in four attacks is simply not going to be enough. So what you want to do is you want to use your fireball staff, or beam staff for that matter, to try and break their block first before hitting through. As you can see, I, I can keep going for quite a while here before anything happens. See the energy start taking damage. It doesn't matter if I heavy, it doesn't go through. So get your staff out, break their block first. Stagger them up and then you can take out take them out one at a time. Here you can really see the value of you of running conduit uh, to quickly uh, be able to vent my overcharge. So generally with a quick play you want to have versatile weapons and versatile weapon combinations, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Now in order to also have something to talk about in my next Sienna guide, I'm going to save the like complicated weapons guide that I did for the melee weapons, I'm gonna save that for uh, either Pyromancer or Battle Wizard. I will, however, shortly do uh, a quick 
like special kill guide for Unchained's breakpoints with both the beam staff and the fireball staff and saving the three other staffs for a future guide but for the beam staff on Unchained you want to run crit chance, power versus chaos and thermal equalizer and for the fireball staff you want to run power versus chaos and infantry and either barrage or thermal equalizer now when applying barrage stacks what you want to know is any of these charged attacks right whether it's fully charged or just a quick attack is actually three hits and now the way barrage works is any attack from the staff is going to apply a debuff to the minion and once the debuff is applied it is then susceptible to proccing your barrage when you hit it again so this hits this best score three times which is why a, a single attack gives me two charges first it applies the dot the second uh, and third attack gives me the first and second uh, buff charges right so when there are multiple enemies one fully charged attack is just instantly five charges as you can see here now even with zero charges if I do just the lightest uh, heavy attack that I can two five right so from zero charges to five charges can be done just like that boom it's super easy it takes no time and that's 25% power that stacks uh, multiplicatively so you always want to keep your barrage stacks up as much as possible and you don't have really have to worry about the buff running out because applying the buff again just takes no time one thing you want to watch out for though with the fireball staff is the fact that the charged attack costs overcharge to hold now as you can see in, in this scenario you suddenly get hit while you're charging it and you're going to proc your, uh, your overheat so uh, something to watch out for. Now let's move on to special killing. Now for the assassin rats, you either need a fully charged and perfectly executed uh, charge attack. As you can see here, it dies. However, you need to watch out because let's say I hit it here, right? See the explosion went off over there and it's not dead. So you can one hit them in that regard, but you need to make sure that you hit the ground there where they are like where they're at other than that you need two uh, light attacks whether they're headshots or not however two of these just will not uh, suffice as you can see here i don't charge it at all it's not going to die however two light attacks even body shots now be careful about spam clicking too much when killing assassins with the fireball stack with your spam clicking then you might hit overcharge and you're fucked However, you wait patiently for the moment of attack, you know where it's going to be on your screen. Um, you understand what I mean? Like stop, you're not in a too stressed situation, and you want to be sure. You see, there's that little animation that he does before he can jump, unless he bucks, of course. Here, I might shoot, I might shoot, and I'm gonna miss the second he attack. I know he's gonna be assassin. right in the middle of my screen, and uh, two wide attacks is gonna take him out easily. Now, as for the beam stuff, assassin. assassin, obviously, two uh, burst attacks is enough to kill it, with a tiny bit of burn damage in between, I believe. Assassin. As you can see, it didn't die there, even though I hit it twice with the. There we go. So you do need a little bit of burn damage, but again, in, in any scenario, you're always going to get that. Because uh, obviously, when you're fighting an assassin most of the time, you're going to be starting out always with a light attack, regardless, in order to stagger it. And then you do the double heavy. Also, keep in mind the beam stab first attack is really good for saving your ass from attacks. That's really good to know. Now, let's move on to stranglers. You want to either get a headshot, plus a body shot. And that's Over enough there, to kill it. As you can see here, headshot, not headshot. It might be your damage for like a tiny bit after, but it should be enough. If you, hit one of, if you hit both attacks and one of them is a headshot. Otherwise, you need three burst attacks on the body. And that's also enough. Or headshot, and then a little bit of meat. Which is also enough. For the fireball with chaos and infantry. A fully charged fireball attack. One shot. So you can't always want to do 
Huh? See there, hook right. Ground doesn't matter. It's always an R. If you need to light attack, uh, you need either three body attacks. Or two headshots. Now for leeches, firstly we have a uh, assuming a tiny bit of burn damage in between. A headshot and a non-headshot. You should kill it. Uh, as you can see here, if you don't get a little bit of burn damage, just the core two hits, it's actually not enough, but it's very little extra that you need. So you're like in most scenarios you're gonna get that extra burn damage almost automatically. Uh, otherwise you need to hit three charge attacks and it should die for damage as you can see here. Now let's get over to our chaos infantry, Fireball Daff with Barrage. Uh, for this one you wanna either do a fully charged attack into a body shot here or Two headshots, yep, that's enough. Or three body hits. Or take sorcerers, you wanna either uh, three body attacks and a bit of burn damage. Oh, that I got a critical damage. Okay. And a bit of burn damage. Or two headshots. One headshot, one body is not enough. So gas rats, you want to do either three body attacks, light, or should I just need headshot like that, and the stack, just need the barrage stack to cancel out, one, two, three, so three light attacks is always enough to kill it, you can also do a fully charged attack into one body shot, and it's also gonna die. I don't believe that two uh, headshots is enough. No, you're still you're gonna need three hits no matter what. Uh, or a fully charged attack into any body shot. Now for uh, the beam stop, three heavy bursts are, is almost enough to kill a gas rat. Which means you need either three body bursts and <coughs> a tiny bit of light uh, attack. Or one of the at least one of those three uh, burst attacks have has to be a headshot. That's enough. If no, one of them is a crit. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, third. As you can see, it's not dead yet. It needs a little bit of light attack. In the headshot, though. One, two, three. It dies. If you double headshot it, you can also get away with that and then a little tiny bit of light. here I've done a bit of testing, maybe more than a bit, and since I personally feel like gunners are one of the main reasons I get fucked when I play on chain, and you want to avoid them at all costs if you're using uh, this stuff in particular, uh, since it's very very ineffective at killing uh, gunners. So you need either one, two, three, four, five, and six light attacks in order to kill it, with starting with zero barrage checks, uh, stacks, that is. Um, if you headshot, I believe you can get away with one, two, three, four, yeah, four hits, with two of them being headshots. Uh, if you only headshot, you still need all four attacks. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna need four attacks uh, regardless. However, one headshot, three body is not enough. Exactly. Even if you hit No, that, that wasn't starting with zero for right stacks, my bad. One, two, three, four, not enough. Okay? Now, what about the charged attack? Okay, what you don't want to do, and what I often end up doing, because you know, you're most of the time you're in a stressed situation, um, is that I know I have to use the charged attack 
the charge attack does more armor damage, but I end up spamming the light attack instead. And as you can see, that still requires like four. Is that four? One, two, three, four. Guess only three if you have all barrage stacks from the start. But here, let me show you why you want to hate gunners on Cataclysm. And you're overcharged. With a bit of luck though, the damage is going to be enough to actually put your ulti off cooldown, which can save you. But as you can see here, an, in, like, an entire barrage from a gunner is actually enough to overheat you multiple times on Kata. So again, just really you want to watch out for these gunners. Especially when there are more of them if you're playing something like Twitch mode and you're on Unchained and you see... Uh, what's it called? I, I forgot what it's called, but basically the one that spawns an army of, uh, of gunners. You want to hide as soon as possible. Like two gunners on Cataclysm can put you on overcharge in like less than a second. Let's let's see here. Let's try and time it. And you see, here, even if you try to dodge and you're not just you know eating it, still like, you have very very little time to get out of the way. However, just to give you an idea, if we take the overcharge reduced talent as well as bar skin, that is going to help quite a lot. Still, it's still going to be quick uh, when you have multiple gunners, so it's, it's definitely not safe. But uh, as you can see, it, it does help. Now you are going to have an easier time on the beam staff versus things like gunners, as it's a lot more precise and has a higher uh, direct armor damage. Now. Assuming a tiny bit of burn, burn damage, a bit of light in between, you can two-shot it with one headshot and one body shot. However, it does require... Yeah, there we go. Which is what you're going to be doing most of the time, as you can usually headshot it. Otherwise, you need three body shots, and three body heavies, in order to finish it off. Also, practice vending your overcharge. You really never want to move all the way up here, because at this point, even friendly fire is gonna is gonna potentially proc your overcharge. So just move it up to the last bar, and then you start fighting. Now, if you've managed to make it th make it this far, and still might die from boredom, hearing me talk, <laughs> thank you so much for that. Um, but I thought I'd just end up here with a quick uh, quick summary, and just let you guys know what my own personal preference is, like in terms of my own favorite build as well as just show what I would do if you were uh, trying to learn Unchained and you're a new Unchained player, what you want to build in, in, in that scenario. Now, whether you're me or a new Unchained player, I would recommend this specific talent build. It's the one I run 90% of the time with 90% of the weapons. And is in my opinion the most, yeah, the most versatile talent build and, and the best talent build. Uh, let me know if you disagree you're more than welcome to um, but that's at least that's my opinion now in terms of weapons if you're a new unchained player I would definitely suggest starting out with the beam staff as it's simply easier to use and it doesn't make sense to run barrage on it anyway so you're always going to be running thermal equalizer which again is the safer of the two choices I personally run boon of Shalia, but uh, I would suggest running bar skin if you're a new unchained player at least if you find yourself proccing your overheat a lot and that being an issue. And then I would start out with the Flaming Flail, again with crit chance and attack speed, and Swiss Lane. Also, you might want to start out running uh, Stamina Recovery if you're a new player. I run it as well, so really that that's my overall preference. Crit chance, Stamina Recovery, Flaming Flail. Uh, I do run Fireball Staff myself, most of the time with the Barrage and Chaos Infantry, but this is more of an advanced build. I would not start out with that. Do it if you're adventurous. It, it's really just it's so much fun when you encounter a chaos patrol uh, and you just know this is my time to shine. Don't even worry about it. Like, I got this, boy. I got this. Um, but um, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Like I put my heart and soul into these videos. And you have no idea how long I've spent on this video between recordings and editing. 
And I mean, even just the small things, like the flaming Roman numerals, which in retrospect were probably totally unnecessary, but still, it takes time to make. And I would absolutely love to be able to make YouTube videos for a living, so any amount of support, anyhow, for whatever reason, is so much appreciated. That's about it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments who, uh, what hero you'd like me to do next, and I'll see you guys next time. I, I will be